Senator Ted Cruz did not have the best weekend. In fact, this weekend was very difficult for Ted Cruz. So he went to New York to watch a Yankees game, and he didn't receive the warmest welcome. As you can see by this picture here, there were multiple people who were flipping him off to his face. One person was giving him a thumbs down, although this gentleman decided to snap a selfie with Ted Cruz, and there were others as well. But I wanted to highlight this picture because it shows you that Ted Cruz's head is literally twice the size as the average human's head. It's, it's very bizarre. Are. But it got much worse for him because, as you're going to see from this video, he was booed and insulted by attendees, and they were ruthless. And this was so satisfying to watch. Oh, that was so good. That was food for the soul. That was uplifting for our spirits. And watching that honestly made me so happy. It, it, it put a smile on my face. Honestly, if it were anyone else, I would feel a little bit bad. I, I would feel sympathy for them. But because it's Ted Cruz... I felt nothing, nothing whatsoever, nothing but satisfaction, that is, but no sympathy for Ted Cruz. Um, now, it got worse for him because the next day, he decided to go on The View to promote his shitty new book, and you would think that in a TV studio, you'd be insulated from hecklers, but no, on The View, he was met with more hecklers, this time protesting him over climate change. If you look at inflation, the, the Nobel laureate economist, Milton Friedman, explained that in the United States, inflation has one cause and one cause only. In, inflation in the United States has one cause and one cause only, and that is when the federal government spends too much money. Okay. We have seen trillions and trillions of dollars spent by Joe Biden and the Democrats. Just last year, last year the federal government took in $4 trillion in tax revenues, the most money in history we've ever taken in. The problem is we spent nearly $7 trillion, and that's what's We do cover climate here, Excuse guys. Me. We do cover Excuse climate. Me. Ladies, ladies, excuse us. Let us do our job. Let us do our job. We hear what you have to say, but you got to go. You got to go. You got to let us do our job. They weren't even protesting you. You got to let us do our job. I couldn't even hear what they were protesting. Now, in a just world, politicians like him would see that everywhere that they go. You go to a Yankees game, you get heckled. You go to a TV studio for an interview, you get heckled. And as he was getting heckled, I don't know if you caught this, he was citing Milton Friedman, calling for austerity in response to inflation. So inflict more pain and suffering on Americans who are already suffering. And earlier in the interview, we'll get to this a little bit later, he talked about how Americans are suffering at the gas pump with inflation. And yet, what is his response? Oh, austerity. That's going to help the situation. It's just these are ghouls and these Republicans, uh, many politicians, not just Republicans, they should never see a peaceful day again in their lives because of how much pain and suffering they inflict on people. But that's not the reality of the situation. But when it does happen, I think it's cause for celebration. Now, the humiliation didn't stop there for Ted Cruz because Anna Navarro, of all people, who's usually pretty milk toast, she asked him a question in a very ruthless manner. The framing here was pretty savage and she asked him about ted cruz still kissing donald trump's ass after he called his wife ugly take a look donald trump went incredibly personal when it came to you he suggested your father may have been involved in kennedy's assassination <laughs> yeah. and he called your wife heidi ugly who by the way is very pretty this is what you said let me get through the question this is what you said about him back in 2016 during the campaign let's take a look I'm going to tell you what I really think of Donald Trump. This man is a pathological liar. 
He doesn't know the difference between truth and lies. He lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth. The man is utterly amoral. It, morality does not exist for him. Yeah. So I have to ask you, because, you know, I'm, I'm married to a Cuban man. Mm -hmm. I frankly don't know how you get over your wife being called ugly. I don't know how you get over those kind of calumnies against your father. But you obviously <laughs> have gotten over it. Today, you sing a very different tune. So tell us, were you lying then or are you lying now? Mm. <laughs> That was embarrassing. Still don't feel any sympathy for Ted Cruz, but um, that was definitely embarrassing. And it's not like this is the first time he's been embarrassed. He's embarrassed his, his self. This is the guy who liked porn on his public Twitter account on 9-11. So, I mean, the man is a fucking joke. He's a clown, right? But we're going to switch gears a little bit because I think that there's a lesson to be learned from this interview with Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, I think, answered that question here, and that's what we're going to watch, in a way that is, I hate to say it, persuasive. And even though it's Ted Cruz, the tactics here are what I want people to pay attention to, because what he did was he gave an answer to a question that even if it's him, even if it's disingenuous, I think that it's going to land with individuals who are voting for them. Now, we might think that Ted Cruz is a clown because he is, but the people who vote for him don't think that he's a clown. And I think it's because if you try to see past all the smarmy, uh, all of the smarminess, you can see that this is an individual who he knows how to bullshit. And even though we see through it, others don't. So watch this response. I think this was actually a masterclass and how to um, get out of anything in politics. Yeah, that's that's a loaded question there. <laughs> Look, it's an, me... it's an, I think a lot of people have the same question. It's a very different Ted Cruz that we're seeing. We are. I mean, would you uh, not agree that that's very different Ted Cruz than, no, than I today's what Ted Cruz? I, what I would say is this. In 2016, we had a primary where Donald Trump and I beat the living crap out of each other. I'll tell you, Heidi laughed when he said that. My father laughed. By the way, my dad didn't just kill Kennedy. He's got Jimmy Hoffa buried in the backyard. <laughs> it was idiotic. And we went after each other, and at the end of the day, he won. And I had a decision to make in November of 2016. He'd been elected president. And I got a responsibility to represent 30 million Texans. I could have decided my feelings are hurt. I'm going to take the ball and go home and not do my job. But if I was prepared to do that, I better be prepared to resign from my job because I have a responsibility. So what I did is I, is I went and said, listen, we have an opportunity to make a difference for this country. And I want to roll up my sleeves and lead the fight to actually deliver on promises. We were talking a minute ago about the incredible booming economy. We saw 7 million people get off of food stamps. We saw poverty dropping. We saw African-American poverty dropping. We saw Hispanic poverty dropping. Those are real results that make a real difference. And I'm proud of that record. And, and why did I choose to work with him, even though I was pissed off at what he said? Because I had a job to do and I had a responsibility. Look, love him or hate him, and I hate him. That was a good response. That was absolutely, undeniably a good response. So listen, I think that a lot of people see through Ted Cruz. They see through the bullshit of these Republican politicians. But the problem is, even if most people, I'd argue, see through Ted Cruz, see how fake and disingenuous he is, those people aren't the ones voting. The people who are voting, they actually think that Ted Cruz apparently is respectable and honest. And... It's not that these people are stupid, even though many of them are. It's that they're being duped by folks like Ted Cruz. And they're being duped because they are masters at deflection and obfuscation. So I want to show you an example and why I think that politicians like Ted Cruz, not necessarily Ted Cruz himself, but politicians who are Republican in general are successful. So he's asked a question about abortion and the economy. Watch the way that he deflects. I think that this is masterful and Democrats need to learn from this here. Senator, the economy and reproductive rights seem to be the two driving factors in getting people out to vote this midterm season. What's your answer to voters who say economic cycles are to be expected? They're a fact of life. But it's fundamentally un-American that a woman's rights could fluctuate from state to state. Well, I'll say, number one, if you talk to people across the country, as I'm doing, I'm in the middle of a 17-state national bus tour right now, people are hurting. Lives of, of working men and women across this country have gotten really hard. They're seniors who've seen their 401ks drop 20, 25, 30 percent in the last two years, who can't afford food and rent and their mortgage. They can't afford basic expenses. And people are upset. I mean, the highest inflation in 40 years is making people's lives a lot harder. When you see someone wait in line to fill up the tank on their gas and they can't fill it up, they got to put $10 or $20 in. 
people are hurting. And I think if you look at the polls in pretty much every state in the country, inflation is the number one issue. Crime is the number two issue. And illegal immigration is the number three issue. And in all, all three of those, this administration's agenda has been a train wreck. They are masters at deflection. And as you notice there, he didn't even touch the issue of abortion. He cut straight to the heart of it, talked about the suffering of the American people as if he actually cared. Now, we all see through it, but the people who are voting, at least in Texas, they don't see through it. So as much as we all hate Ted Cruz, I think that we need to ask ourselves, why are politicians like him more so transparent and smarmy setting the agenda? And it's because of the rhetorical tactics that they use. If you notice there, rather than being put on the defensive about abortion and his party's extremism on this issue, he put Democrats on the defensive, forced Democrats to respond to the record 40-year inflation. Of course, that's got to be the Democrats' fault, right? Because they're in power currently, and the party in power is always blamed when there's an economic downturn. So this is what Democrats have to do. They have to learn how to put Republicans on defense. They should never be in a position where they're the ones playing defense, especially given how extreme and fake this party is. Now, that's not to say that I think that Democrats are wonderful, but when you juxtapose them with Republicans, the differences are very, very clear. You have one party that is a threat to democracy that doesn't care about working people, but yet all they have to do is say that they care about working people and all of their extremism, their reprehensible stance on abortion, their bigotry, it goes out the window and voters just focus on that. Republicans are masters at setting the agenda. So as much as we all hate Ted Cruz, I think that it would behoove us to try to learn from them, learn from the tactics. You don't have to be disingenuous like Ted Cruz is and fake and smarmy like he is, but Democratic politicians absolutely should understand that the tactics that they are using are effective. And even if most people hate Ted Cruz and they shit on him and flip him off to his face, he is a politician who gets elected. And he gets elected in a very populous state like Texas, right? And it may be a red state, but still, we have to make other people see what we see when it comes to politicians like Ted Cruz. The fact that this man is electorally viable shows that Democrats have failed. So we've got to keep pushing to expose these politicians. And I think most importantly, Democrats, uh, elected Democrats, that it needs to be introspective and learn from Republicans and emulate their rhetorical tactics. I think that it would benefit them greatly if they put them on the defensive and went on the attack more often. And thankfully, we're starting to see that with Joe Biden and Tim Ryan. But it's got to be a strategy that all Democrats get on board with. Otherwise, it's not going to be effective. But I'll leave that there. Ted Cruz overall was shit on. But, you know, I think that there's some things that we can learn from him. But most importantly, the takeaway from this video is that I want you to get joy and amusement from Ted Cruz having a bad time and getting made fun of. Because, I mean, if that doesn't cheer you up and put a smile on your face, then nothing will. Me, me, me. I'm Ted Cruz. Me, me. Apple mail, not a beta mail.